And where base 64 comes from, the 64 part, is that we have 64 different characters that we can map that binary data to. So it's unlikely that you'd want to go send your friend a picture, but you want to have it in human readable characters. Like, that would seem kind of silly. However, if you were working with a text-based protocol and you needed to be able to take the bytes of the picture and have that represented as human readable characters, then converting that picture to base 64 could be totally useful in that situation. So now that you have a rough idea of what we're talking about, let's jump over to Visual Studio and we'll see how you can leverage base 64 encoding. We're going to go from a string two bytes to a base 64 string, and then we're going to go all the way back and see how that works. So let's go check it out. All right, on my screen here, I have something really simple that's just going to start by reading some input and putting that into a variable here. So on line three, we'll take whatever's on the console and we'll stick that into the variable that's called input. From there, we're going to get the binary representation of input. So we can use the UTF-8 encoding right here and then get the bytes for the input and we'll store that into this variable called bytes. So at this point, we have a string called input and we have a byte array called bytes. But if we want to be able to work with base64 encoding and have that binary data represented as a string again, what's the next step? Well, it's really simple actually. On line seven, you can see this one simple call that we make to the convert static class, and it has a method called to base64 string. We're able to pass in that byte array, and then the result of that is going to be yet another string, but it's going to be those bytes encoded as base64.